Good morning, good night, good evening, everyone, and today is Memorial Day for the United States of America. Today we honor the American servicemen who gave their lives today to protect our country. Now, I chose to make a review on the one ship in the game that I feel best represents the sacrifice and the heroism that the American Navy represents. USS Enterprise. The one ship in the Pacific that are in the most battle stars, which was rep which battle stars are basically representation for major battles. Enterprise is at twenty battles battles major battles in the Pacific, from basically the beginning of the war to the very end of the war at Okinawa. She saw all the combat. She saw every major operation during the island hopping campaign to retake the Japanese and push the Japanese defense perimeter back. She's a very celebrated ship and she's still a very strong ship. Now you can't get this ship anymore. You can only get this ship in super containers with their nerf coming this next week or well we are on the May 21st right now so the super container nerf comes this Wednesday. So after that it will be a lot harder to get this ship in super containers. So your best chance to get this ship will be in Santa containers at Christmas, which are heavily RNG based. And if you're gonna do try to shoot for the ship in Santa containers, you wanna do the mega containers because those will give you the best chance of getting Enterprise. Now the way those drop is that it always gives you the least desirable ships. So the tier eight, seven, sixes nines those kind of ships first only if you had like every tier every ship on the list besides the rare ships then it would start giving you the rare ships like enterprise you might get lucky and get a rare ship fairly early on but it's heavily rng based and just a lot of luck so we'll get let's get into enterprise and see what you'll be getting if you decide to eventually get the ship or get hopefully if you're lucky enough to get the ship i should say Without a contributor flag like I have, you'll get 5% to credits, 55 to ship XP, 65 to commander XP, and then 100% with a clan. So, very decent economics. Armor-wise, she is coded in 25mm and 19 and 21mm plating. So, bow plating is 9 is 21, 21 torpedo protection, and then a 21 aft plating and then for the hangar armor she gets 21 19 millimeters 38 millimeters which stretches practically along here then you get 19 millimeters back to 38 and then you're up at the 19 hangar plating and then you get a 25 millimeter flight deck eh, superstructure not really counting as armor so let's pull this armor away some of this armor shall we well, let's pull her sides off, and you can see that this is basically her citadel armor, pretty much right here. So let's pull a little bit more of that armor off. That's her citadel right there. It is slightly at the waterline, but it's still a waterline citadel. So it's still citadelable, but not much. But even though this is 40 millimeters, if you're angled in this carrier, and it punches through your torpedo belt armor, which is 21, then you can bounce it on the 40 millimeters. So that's about 61 millimeters of armor that you have on your side that if you're angled. So they literally have to shoot you here. So if they shoot you at just the right angle, the shells come in and then bounce off. Now, that's only lucky if it happens. Because most players, if you shoot a CV, you're not going to miss. So that ability-wise, she gets 51 thousand four hundred HP with a twenty eight percent torpedo reduction Hornet gets the exact same since they are sister ships so I'll bring that up Enterprise dead does, does get about fourteen hundred more health and the same torpedo protection since these are sister ships but the tech ship Lex Lexington does get about well about six thousand more HP but it has twelve percent torpedo reduction or 12% less protection. So that is a major difference for a CV. So what that means is that 
Enterprise could hypothetically take three to two torpedoes, depending on the torpedoes. If there were American torpedoes, you could probably take about three of them on the hull and still survive, assuming they're on your belt on the torpedo blister. If they're Japanese torps, if you take two on the torpedo blister, uh, you'll live, but you can't take a third one. Now, let's get into her planes. The planes are what set Enterpri Enterprise apart they're from all the carriers in the game. She gets F6F Hellcats, TVF Avengers, and SB2C Helldivers. Now, the, Hell the Hellcats was one of the first planes in the Pacific that Enterprise got during her 43 to 44 rework when she was brought into Bremington to get her new torpedo blisters and their Bofors guns put on. She was given a squadron of the F6F Hellcats to basically, you know, take back the fight to the Japanese. Because this is when they were finally finalizing, like, we're going to fight back against the Japanese. We're going to go on the offensive now. These could outclass the Japanese in Mitsubishi Zero. Okay, so what are the stats on these Hellcats? Individually, each plane gets 1,600 HP with a minimum speed of 164 and a max of 205. Engine boost time is 5.5 seconds with a reload of 9 seconds. Now, for squadron size, this is where she gets she sets herself apart compared to other carriers. There's 12 rocket planes in a squadron with four with three in each attacking flight. That's four strikes of rocket planes. Ideally, you'd probably get about three off, but not four. In the OG days, before the rocket nerf, um, it would be very possible to get four strikes off. Now, you get 20 of these rockets on deck. So, hi hypothetically, if you manage your planes right, you could do two full or two good strikes on it before you'd have to really worry about replenishing. Now, I would only advise launching two strikes because you want to conserve these guys. These are kind of like, go in, get some quick damage, and then pull out for your uh, torpedo bombers or AP bombers. You know, get a fire and get that DCP up, cool down, then go in with the torpedoes and the AP bombers and get those hard-hitting strikes. The regen time for these planes is really good. One of the fastest in Tier 8 at, 41, at 44 seconds per rocket plane. That's pretty good. Now, there's six rockets in a payload for 1,900 max damage and an armor pin of tw 27 with a 7% of fire. So, with three strikes, that's 18 rockets. So, 18 rockets per strike times four waves is about 72 rockets. Now, you'd probably get about half those rockets off through around, you know, 32 Oh, wait, no, 36, sorry. 36. You'd get about 36 rockets off, and that's pretty much a safe, uh, you know, attack one that you should do. You should launch for about two strikes and then pull the planes back because you want to conserve them. You want to keep these planes active throughout the whole battle because they are little chunk damages throughout the whole battle. They set your fires, and then your torpedoes bombers come in and get the floods. Now, these will pin, with a 27mm armor pin, will pin practically every DD you will face. The only ones that would really put up against them would be, like, the cruisers, like the um, Germans' uh, alternative gunboat line, which has more armor, and, well, Russian destroyers. But with 27mm armor pin... Uh, you shouldn't have to worry about most of them. You'll still pin like 98% of the DDs you're facing. So this ship is extremely powerful against DDs. Not as powerful as she used to be. In OG days, two strikes on this thing on a DD and the DD's gone. Now it's probably about three to four. Good strikes. So she did take a hard nerf in her... When they nerfed the rocket plane. So that is a downside. She's not as great as she used to be, but um, if you know how to play Enterprise, you can still make these rockets work. And I have wonderful replay footage that shows that. Now, the TBF Avengers were a replacement for the TBD Devastators that you see on the Hornet. 
if anyone's seen the original Midway movie, like in the 1970s, 80s, and then the 2016 version with the version that was in theaters, uh, those depict the destruction of the torpedo bombers very accurately. And the Avengers were, well, the reason they got that nickname was because they were built to avenge Pearl Harbor. Now, the plane stats on these. Individually, they get 2,000 HP per plane. They have a minimum speed of 123, max of 160. Engine boost time is, well, 22 seconds with a 36 second reload. There's nine planes, nine torps bombers in a squadron with three in each attacking flight with 16 on deck with a preparation time of around 54 seconds per plane. So it's, so every plane you do lose in the torp bomber, you'll feel it, but it takes a lot. You'll have to lose at least four to five in your, if you lose four or four or five, maybe a whole squadron, you're going to feel it. So you have to be very careful on these torp planes for sure they each have one drop so that's so three drops in a torp that's 12 yeah 12 torps no nine torps yeah sorry nine torps for about 64 500 damage so 6500 times nine is around almost 60,000 around 58,500 which is practically enough to dev strike most. You'll dev strike most cruisers you'll face. If you're top tier in Enterprise and you run into tier sixes, yeah, they'll die to your torps easily. Uh, most battleships you'll face, you can pretty much delete them. The only ones you'd have to take another pass on would be the tier eight ones. But that's where your rocket, your um, dive bombers come in to finish those guys off. Now, the torps are slow at 35 knots, they have an arm time. Uh, 376 with a 3.5 range, which isn't the best, but it's still pretty good. With the right skills, one rocket, one torp strike does about, oh, off the top of my head, 12,000 to about 14,000, depending on the target. So, you can do pretty good damage with these torp planes. But Hornet does the exact same amount of damage. But you only get like one to two passes. Now, the SB2C Helldivers, nicknamed the Beast, because they didn't, because the crews never really liked these planes. They had these, these, these bombers, and I'll bring them up for you. The Helldivers had a lot of issues, you know, going in. They were the replacements for the, for the classic SB, SBD Dauntlesses. But the Dauntlesses had, you know, external you know, bomb, bomb racks. The Hell Divers have an internal bomb uh, load like the, like the Avengers do. So they could go faster than the Dauntless, than the Dauntlesses, which was a huge advantage in the Pacific War. Now these bombers, these were Enterprise's bread and butter back in the day and were things that would cause, well, battleships to quiver. Because if you fought an Enterprise, and it was a good Enterprise player in the RTS days, You'd be screwed. Now, the reason that is, we'll get into this. But just by looking at this, I think you can already tell, you know, why they're so fearsome. Now, they each get a plane health of 23, 29. Going high, but not on the best side. The speed isn't the best at 135 minimum with the 172 max. 22, 22 second engine boost time with... 36 uh, second reload, 9 planes in a squad with 3 in each attacking flight, and 16 on deck. So you really, really got to play these guys really conservatively. Because if you run out of these guys, you're losing about a third to about almost half your main damage dealers. Because there's, like I said, there's 3 in each attacking flight, 9 on in a squadron, but 16 on deck. That's not a lot on deck. That's not a lot of planes when you have full, you know, modules and everything built in. And the regen is the one of the hardest on this plane at a hundred and at seventy seconds, so about a minute and twenty seconds per plane. And randoms, that's a lot of time. And ops you can make it do, but it still hurts. Now why I said these were, you know, 
really good planes. Well, look at what they're carrying. They're, they, these planes are the only planes, or they used to be the only planes before the Germans came out. They were the only ones that had armor-piercing bombs. Now, they dropped two of these guys for about 10,000 damage. So, three, so that's around 30,000 per drop. Now, let's go and just say 30,000, okay? And let's say you get four citadels. So that's around 20,000 damage. That's a good drop. Ideally, you, on average, you might get probably two to three average. If you're really unlucky, one per citadel. But unless you really master these bombs, average-wise, um, two to three citadels is the average. I've only gotten a couple fours and a fives myself. They're still pretty strong, but they're not as strong. They did take a nerf. Like, Wargaming really tuned down these guys also. Again, this ship isn't as great as it used to be. If you really want this ship, you're going after her mainly for the prestige and to say you have an Enterprise. She's still a good ship. Don't get me wrong. She's still an amazing ship. But she is, but like I have in my review, Hornet is practically Enterprise 2.0. She's 10 times easier to use in an Enterprise, and in my opinion, she's just a little bit better. But I still love my Enterprise, because I had fond memories in this ship. Picking on destroyers, doing 1v1 ranked sprints with Enterprise. This ship carried me in a lot of battles. And rewarded me a lot of times in ranked and just everything. I had good memories in this ship. I can tell you, I already have almost a million XP in this ship. Artillery wise, she gets eight five inch guns. Now, for the airstrike, she, it's a seven kilometer range with uh, 4,200 max bomb damage and one drop, drop in your payload for depth charges. Again, it's automated, so you don't have to worry about it, but it only activates if you're pinged. If the sub is smart enough and doesn't ping you, um, you're screwed. The whole automated system relies on getting pinged. If the sub is smart enough and, and can drop you without using unguided torps, uh, or not using his homing torps, I should say, uh, you're screwed. And that's the way around this system, is if you're a sub, use your unguided torps. Or you're not your homing torps, I should say. Because you'll activate the... Well, you'll activate the... Um, Depth charge, for sure. But it's a very easy workaround system. Even I know that. And I really think that should be an exploit. That should be changed personally, but that's just me. Now, for AA-wise, she gets 50 or like in single mount machine guns. She gets 8 quad mount or dual, 8 dual mount Bofors guns. And then she gets, well, six quad mount uh, Bofors. Again, the Bofors are where 90% of her um, damage, AA damage comes from. And then she gets the eight five-inch guns that are on her deck. So the continuous damage isn't bad at, you know... 388 with the short range having 368 and the medium ones having 315. Again, like the medium ones are the most of your damage is in the aura lichens because there's there's so many of them, but the vast majority of them is because if the carrier is good, he's not going to drop in your short range. He's going to drop in your medium and long range. So you're so basically your Bofors are your main defense. And a shell explosion does do 1,400 uh, max damage, but you only get four of them. With a 3.5 to 4, there with a 3.5 to 5.8 uh, shell range. So, not the best. Um, against Soviet carriers, you know, you're going to have problems. Because Soviet carriers can drop outside of, you know, the AA. So, you'll have to be wary of that. 
But she can defend herself. And she has a very strong tool to defend herself against. Maneuverability wise, uh, she gets 33 knots with a 1,070 turning circle and a 13 second rudder shift. Um, I never advise doing anything to change the rudder shift because you're giving up a strong module to basically counter that. So I never recommend putting anything to deal with that with CV. Same with the concealment. I don't recommend doing anything with the concealment on a carrier unless you're running like a legendary audacious or doing a full stealth build on Russian carriers. Russian carriers have ridiculous stealth. So a full stealth build Russian carrier can get down to really low ranges, especially a tier 8 one. Tier 10, even a little bit more stealthy. But I never recommend putting anything to deal with the concealment on a carrier. I think it's just a waste. Now, for the build, I personally run Air Group's Modification 1, Aircraft Engines Mod 1. I do Torpedo Bombers Mod 1 because of the 5 second extend time. Because with the rockets kind of neutered, um... I use the Torp Bombers to go after DDs now. So I like to have a little bit extra time to line up my strike. Now, that is also doable. I mean, you could also do aerial torpedo speed for the extra speed. Because these are only 35 knot Torps. So you can increase the speed. So it really depends on which one you want. Um, back in the day, when it was OG, you'd always take attack time because you'd have... Because these rockets were the bread and butter. Now for module 4. There's no doubt. Uh, you want bombers modification 2. For the AP bomber health. To give these bombers more health. Because these are your main damage deal. These things will deal practically damage to Japanese battleships. Well basically every battleship in the game. With the exception probably being French battleships. Because it's a French battleship. And they have those armor weird armor schemes. But you can still citadel them. I mean, the AP bombs do practically damage everything. Let's be honest. Even cruisers they hit. But it just takes time to learn them. And then the reason I don't use concealment is because I do flight control mod 1 for 5% to my aircraft prep. And then I get two plus 2 of each on deck. So I get more planes versus concealment. So, of course. Now, the reason I say it, it's also slightly hard to snipe an Enterprise is because of these boys right here. The patrol fighters. Enterprise used to be what, you know how people hate the burn? Well, Enterprise used to be the burn. Well, technically, it could still be considered the burn of Tier 8. You get, each of your squadrons get three of these fighters. So that's 10 fighters per, so that's 30 fighter patrol fighters per attack bomber, torpedo bomber, and AP bombers. That's 90 patrol fighters you have. If you time those right, you can neuter a whole carrier, an, your enemy carrier. Like if it's 1v1 sprint or brawl and you have an enterprise, well, let's just be honest. They ain't getting through you. Because your patrol fighters can they basically wipe out whole squadrons. If the CV player is incompetent or not the best. Let's be honest. Now, for exterior-wise, this is what, you know, Enterprises would look like if you got her. And you didn't have access to the alternative camo. Now, the alternative camo looks like this. I personally love running this one because it looks more brighter. It's more vivid. It just makes her look more pretty. Now, for the build, you all recognize this build because it was my Hornet build. So... I truly believe this works because air supremacy, where the aircraft preparation, improved engines for more speed, aircraft armor for continuous damage, survivability expert. If you have Alexander Ovechkin on a carrier, he'll do great. But Halsey also works good because if you can get Confederate, you get that 10, that 20% to aircraft preparation. So you'd have 25% 
at least 25% to your um, aircraft preparation. So that's a huge boost. But, you know, Servability Expert, last gas, so you can get the, so your engine boost recharges on that last strike, so you can use your engine boost on the last one. I use Sight Stabilization because it allows me to aim up my strikes faster. Faster strikes equals faster drops equals less planes lost. And then Bomber Flight Control for the AP Bombers to go faster. And then Proximity Fuse for the Torpedoes. That's why I can do more damage on my torpedo strikes because I take this skill. Now, if you have problems with taking AA flak bubbles and everything, you can substitute bomber flight control for enhanced aircraft armor. Um, that's pretty much... But I would honestly recommend this build if you want to go for a more damage focus attack style. But if you want to focus on a little bit more survivability, you can take aircraft armor inst instead of bomber flight control. But... The rest of the skills are practically needed. But again, let's get into the replays, folks. And we'll show you how Enterprise still does it. Hello, and welcome to WoW's Operation Replays. Today we have another... Well, it was supposed to be an Akatsuki. But we're, we're looking at, actually, Volron in the Enterprise. So we're dipped up with Volron... We got a Nebraska Zara with Doc Einstein, uh, Nuremberg, Lord Holland, and the uh, Akatsuki, and Mahan and Ansham. So we see Doc, or not Doc, but we see Wolron basically do. The classic CV job of going south. Now, sometimes the CV can go for the Nuremberg, but I absolutely recommend the CV going for the Baron and the DD. Because that's just where a lot of your damage is going to be in the first part of the match. Now, he is running the uh, high school fleet camo. That's why the planes look so different. And he basically should be dropping his fighter right around now. Yeah. But you see, look at that drop. That was a really odd drop. But we'll, but they should hit. He gets two torps. So around 10,000 damage. And he'll pick up the DD on this next pass. Yes, Enterprise can kill this DD like this. Yeah, that's a dead DD. Pulls the planes out of the flat bubble so they can get away. And then drops a fighter. And you see that stream of fire from the Akatsuki going in. Voron taking his AP bombers. Let's look at the damage. Triple Citadel. So that was about 15,000 right there. That's a pretty good AP drop. I mean, obviously you want to hit more, but three Citadels with Enterprise dive bombers is still pretty good. If you can get a four or five, even better. That one, not the best. No Citadels, but solid pin damage. I gotta say, it is weird watching my stream of fire come in. 
always weird when you're the one playing, but then you watch it from another point of view. Now, I, now Lord Holland, Miss Elf, does pick up the uh, Baron. But again, the star of this video is the Enterprise. And yeah, he's going to have this Nuremberg right here. It's going to go down. Boink. Dead Nuremberg. Fortunately, the fighter, unfortunately, the fighter does lock on and does take some of his planes down. So that is unfortunate. But he did a phenomenal job of getting through those flak bubbles. Really beautiful job of getting through the flak. Gets a nice three torpedoes on there. No floods though. I'll be honest, from my point of view in the Akatsuki, I thought he had a flood on it. What's weird <laughs> watching my show go in? Oh, it's like a some constant stream of fire. Does a nice job of avoiding all those flak bubbles. Goes in for the Baron. Mm, not the best drop. Even I could tell by the bombs. But I mean, that is one of the downside sides of Enterprise Bombers. Sometimes they hit and do great damage. Sometimes they don't. A lot of it just in the, in, in the bomb dispersion. Now he is going to kill this battleship here. Four bomb hits, one citadel. Now, doesn't look like much. He's only up to 70,000. So it's not a huge amount, but I'm sure we'll see that change. I am very impressed by his flak dodging skills. Very impressed. Beautiful drop, nice and even. Slams on the brakes, makes the U-turn. Gets about 12,000 on those on that strike. I think it was the Nebraska that got this kill, I think. Was it in a, yeah, it was in Nebraska's fire. And you see, he's already got his fighters up. He's already going for the DD. Now we're going to see how he just deletes this. Now again, you know, we do have sixes, and so the health is going to be low. But you're going to see just how much he takes off. From my point of view, down there on the ground was like, whoa. But it's interesting watching it from his point of view. You see, Enterprise, it is a little hard to get it. But boom, four, almost 5,000 just on that one strike with nine rockets. That's what, now imagine that used to be the old Enterprise. That probably would have been a dead DD. It's a nice 2K1, and he's going to have it. I mean, he's got fires and a broken engine on it. He's got it. Boom. Dead DD. And you see that... All the team is still alive. We have two DDs going north. And the rest of the ships are coming out here. Akatsuki's already making his way out.
Now we will see Volrum going in on the Fubuki. He's already shown us that he's capable of destroying DDs in one strike. So let's look at the health. 10,000. Okay. And... Wow. Leaves it on 2 HP. I think. I think it was 2 HP. But... He sure deleted it pretty quickly. And yeah, and then he has every ability to make that second strike. With the de with the decreased health and everything, these these battleships just go down way too fast with the decreased health. I mean, really fast. You know, it's about eight thousand. So it's hard to. I don't know if he has a. Um, proximity fuse on his Akatsuki picks up the Fuso now he is moving forward to spot the, the DD or the Nuremberg let's see how much damage he gets 7,000 Akatsuki takes out the fighters for him. Mm, 3,000. So he's got about 10,000 on that one uh, cruiser. But now he has to, he can't help the Akatsuki no more. He has to go north. He has to. He has no choice. Because those ships are just north and it's like they're just not going around the corner, and the DDs are just... Well, the Anchan's still there, kind of protecting it. Well, Han's kind of given up and is coming out. So he has to kill these guys in the north. He's up to 133,000. But again, remember, a good portion of his damage was on DDs. He's got probably at least 30,000 damage, probably just in DDs alone. Now the fighter has locked on. He does basically delete that cruiser's health. He only needs to get like two bombs on, two torps on that. It's going to be a close one. Let's see if they hit. And... Just one torp. And he was just laying a fighter for me. That's what's so nice is that he was nice enough to fly out there and drop a fighter for me in the Akatsuki. Now, as you can see, I think he was looking back to see if I would die. Because that was pretty damn close to a drive-by. I was kind of worried there. Because I was going to torp the guy, the gay, and then I saw that it was literally just a drive-by driving by him. So it was, it was a little scary for me. I think he was even wondering if I would die. But I do pick up the gate. Mm, how's Mr. Anshan doing on health? Eh, Anshan's doing pretty well on health. Yeah, let's see how this bomb dropped. Double Citadel, so 9,000. And Chan is going to pick up that just DD, though. Yep, he picks up the battleship. Torps are on the battleships out there by the Akatsuki. Uh, 
Akatsuki basically deletes both of them with his reload booster. Apparently he was having trouble setting a waypoint. But yeah, Nebraska's going down. Or should go down, hypothetically. And is he gonna get the Baron kill? I believe he does get the Baron kill. Yep, picks up the Baron. Nebraska barely lives. But he's at almost 200k now. Five kills. A really beautiful display of Enterprise. That's inner. He's actually going to... I think is he actually going to go for the... Nope. Goes in for the moths. Let's see what the moths' health looks like. 3,500 on it. Battle ends in five minutes. And what are we looking at? Another 3,700. He's going to get one more strike off. I don't know if it'll be a great strike. Oh, that looks a little high. Yep, a little high. Damn. But it, but I mean, you can literally see he literally took almost 10k of that DD's health away. That adds up to a lot of XP. I'm hoping he can break the 200k mark. I think he will break 200k in Enterprise. Now he's going to go for the battleship or the DD. Nope. Looks like DD. Mm, it's going to be close. 39 HP. Who picks up the kill? Looks like... Yep. He picks up the kill with 39 HP left. He can crack the 200k mark if he can land this one a strike, though. And, yeah, he's going to crack 200k. Question is, is the Mahan going to leave the zone before he gets a chance? Three Torps. So, yep, he cracked 205k. Don't know if he's going to get an, a strike off on this Ganaiz now, though. Mm, it's going to be close. Mm, let's see. Bombs away. Oh, just as the bombs drop. But a beautiful... I'd love to do an Enterprise review, but I just can't seem to get some good gameplay of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're going to have fun. As a matter of fact, I will. I'm going to enjoy this. Only one battleship. Okay. This is the base commander. We expect the arrival of transport and attack squadrons. 
Strike aircraft will ensure support during the embarkation and evacuation of transport aircraft. Portion commanders. You think? We'll just, I'm just gonna spot the DEDs, don't want to spook them, and that is exactly what I'm gonna go do. <laughs> uh, bad move. Okay. Look <laughs> at how fast these things go. Oh wait, I should probably be moving. Autopilot mode enabled. I got one torpid on it for you. That should give you at least the health advantage. I don't know why the kid's not wanting. I mean, he's got... The thing... What? I mean, the kid should be really out there pushing with you. I mean, you two together could just wreck everything out there. <laughs> Get out of the chat! There we go. <laughs> and you almost took a torp again. Man, you're just not having good luck today. Hey, hon, how was your day? Did you not go to... where did you go to... Costco for lunch? Wow. Oh, thank you. You can put that in the fridge for me. It's warm. No, it's not. Feel it. It's still pretty warm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that guy is, uh, smoked up. Aww, that's... Or, not smoked up, he's there. Come on, come on. There we go, okay, yeah, come on, Ayoba, shoot down those planes. Yes, it was very nice. That she gave you two candy bars and a soda. She didn't have to. Old ladies over there must be nice. Ow. Wow. Would you like some spotting cap? Yes. Yes, I would. There you go. That should keep everything spotted. Seems like this kid does not understand the strategy that I use. Did you drop all your torps? Yeah. Yeah. Another set coming in on the Wyoming. I am flambéing him. Re oh, okay. I guess I don't get to kill him. Okay. Sorry. Eh, whatever. I have 101,000 damage already. Uh, when are the Omaha's gonna spawn? Uh, get around that rock real quick. You should be okay. And then smoke up. I'm engine boosting now. Yeah, so yeah, get around here and you'll be okay. Okay. I could eat them alive.
Maximum danger. I don't think maximum danger comes for another like ten minutes. No, and the freaking Iowa class battleship is coming at. Uh, yeah. The rockets just aren't what they used to be. I could have had that DD easily if, they, if these were the old rockets. That's was the whole gimmick of this ship, and without them, it's just not that good anymore. Yeah. Enemy. Oh, wow. That's one way to take care of the Atlanta. Okay, uh, when can I expect our Omaha class friends? Uh, right there. Found them. I'll drop a smoke, or I'll get my fighters over there and drop a fighter for you ahead of them. Okay. Smoke up. There you go. God, Omaha class hurts. Takes me a second to find a citadel. Yeah, but once oh, you find it, it, it's like easy peasy. Like, yeah. I think he's off. I think you don't have the angle anymore. Eh, maybe. I oh, just said, oh. uh, yeah, I still have his angle. Oh. Okay. Should be two more. Oh, I'm counting on it. How much smoke time is left? I got a minute and a minute, two seconds. Okay, oh, yep, there, there he is. Huh. Oh, I found it first try. An enemy aircraft carrier was spotted in the combat area. Oh my god. <laughs> Eat shit. Really, Lion? Let's fucking come in with the HE kill steal. <laughs> Destination reached. Autopilot mode disabled. We should probably move into a better position. Uh oh. No! Really? You just stole the last two kills from me. You bastard. Oh, whatever. Where is he? Can lie on. Yeah, he's just sitting there in the frickin' repair base. I think this is already redemption for the freaking. I would call it redemption for you. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not stopping here. I have plans. Uh. So they're gonna be off on the one line. Okay. I, I would position yourself maybe here. That way you can take both groups. And also remember, you got destroyers coming in too. Should I. I should repair first, right? What? Should I repair yeah. first? Hmm. I'm gonna repair first so I have all my health.
Hmm. Okay. Kinda, yeah. Stations reporting the position of a strategic okay. target. Fighter destroyed. I'll take out that carrier. I just gotta get okay. some more rocket planes back up. It might be a while, but I can still take it out. Just gonna wanna get some of this AA down first. I'm gonna going and murdering the DDs real quick. This thing has the maneuverability of a slug. Nope, we got it. Didn't have to use my rockets. He's dead. Enemy aircraft carrier destroyed. I'm seeing the error of my ways. You got the health advantage now. That's a fair good. You want help? Oh, the guy's coming. Yeah, I can. Ow. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give um, you help. Torp bomb I'm squad. Just... Torp squad are coming in. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can't get me again, you son of a bitch. <gasps> there you go. I took out the other one for you. It has no health on, on it. Okay. Thank you. I'm just shocked I was able to citadel the rafter with these A HE with these rockets. I didn't think that was nice. possible. Thank you. I'm gonna go in this for this Cleveland now. Okay, I am gonna heal for at the North Carolina. Hold on. <laughs> Let me try Citadel this Cleveland. Battle ends in five minutes. Uh, I'm gonna go for the Dallas then, because he's all alone out there. You will try. Where'd all those torps <laughs> come from? I almost killed him. Oh, those were Megami torps. See, will either of my torps hit him? Oh no, the Cleveland that Mert got murdered. He screwed me over. Oh, the kill ceiling Leon is about to die. 
Oh, he just popped. He popped out of the water like that Sharn horse. Okay, I am right in the way of this. Oh, oh yeah, that that felt good. Yeah, right there. Oh, I hit the Dallas with my torp. <laughs> How do you like that, you bastard? Oh, he's gonna kill me though. Or nope. not? Lucky, unless there's someone from the other side hits you. Okay, I'm undetected. Okay. Uh, I would do. I would uh, go in and stealth torp them, but I think I'd rather heal. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I mean, your torps are ten kilometers, and let me think. You technically still have the ability to stealth torp. You just got to stay nine k away from the Cleveland. Okay, I want to heal a bit, because otherwise they can fart on me and it'll kill me. Three thousand, not bad. How much? Three thousand with the rockets, not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. I'm literally okay. out of rockets, and I'm gonna have only like one strike on torpedo bombers left. I'm going in. Yeah, I ended up taking like a giant HE salvo from a frickin' or a AP salvo from the North Carolina that was meant for the Cleveland. So I think I just saved the Cleveland from being deleted. But uh... approaching target. Oh, there's the radar. Okay, time to go. Got it. Nice one, Torp. I'm entertaining our guests currently. Missed me, missed me. Oh, that's not gonna miss. Oh, it is gonna miss. Haha! -ha. That's a. Uh, Missouri is in for an ass fucking if he uh, gets too far in. I think I just. Did you see all my torps coming in to kill him? Oh, I see him. A straddle oh, it looks like the Cleveland's gonna eat some of them. Oh yeah, yeah, like that. Okay, never mind. I guess they weren't in for much of an ass fuck. <laughs> Two bombs managed to hit him. Okay, I think that was a suitable redemption for the Akazuki. I ended up with uh, 295,836 damage. I think so. <laughs> what do you think of my strategy now, kid? Uh huh? What do you think of it now? <laughs> That'll work for gameplay. That'll work. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was an ass kicking of the ages. 42,000 on that CV. Oh my goodness, what did uh, I do now? Well, to technically 43,000. That was a five-star op, too. At 3.30, I'm going to be doing something uh, in town, so I'll have to head out. But okay. I have till then for some fun. I ended up doing 49k to the New York. 28 to the... Let's see. Freaking... Oh my god. Oh, that was uh, that was fun. 550 hits, 11 fires. <gasps> Woo! That's a lot of damage. Most of my fighters were lost to their Raptors AA defense. I'm getting just getting to it. Yeah. Ugh. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad. Not bad.